Uh, we're going to get ready for this series coming up against the Nats in a second. There's an interesting conversation about who's going to be the starter on Sunday as well. But first, Ken Rosenthal was on his uh, or his podcast is Fair Territory, but he does guest appearances on Foul Territory. <laughs> that's I think confusing. Is, that's confusing. I think that's the way it works. Um, but anyways, Rosenthal was on a podcast that he does, and he suggested the Blue Jays could be a team that are would be a surprise seller at the deadline his quote was the jays have had a couple of months before the 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 jays have a couple of months before the deadline to assess who they are and you can't assess just yet i do think that's kind of important he continued to say but if they do not perform to their potential if they're hanging around 500 or even below at the deadline i don't care how close they are to a wild card at some point you've got to look yourselves in the mirror as a franchise and say where are we going here are we going forward with this group. I, I want to talk about that part first because I do think the Jays are in they're in a bit of a unique spot as a franchise because they are their own TV partner. They get that revenue straight up. And I think with what we know about how much one single playoff broadcast is worth the sports net, especially considering they get their own playoff broadcast now. It's not like it was in years past where they got a, you know, Samuel cast the Fox one or TNT one or whatever it used to be. I think if they're at 500, if they're sniffing anywhere close to a wild card, I don't think they sell. I don't think ownership gives them the green light to sell off and punt on the season. I don't think they would add. I don't think we're talking about them trading an A-level prospect to try help this team, but I think they would try to get in if they're at 500. So again, Ken Rosenthal, one of the best insiders in the game. Who am I to sit here and argue with his reporting? But it felt like he was giving more of an opinion there, and I'll disagree with it and say if the Jays are close, I don't think they sell. If they're 500 at the deadline, they push forward and try to get in with 88 wins. Yeah, I think I, I agree with you there. I think the the Blue Jays are in a situation right now, especially consider the context, the renovations. Rogers put a lot of money into the stadium, and the expectation is that the seats are going to be full in September because the team is making a playoff push. If they're so bad at the trade deadline, like I'm talking well out of the wild card gate race, 10 games back with six teams or whatever to jump over to even get into the third wild card spot. Maybe we could see them sell off some guys who are free agents at the end of this season. But if there's any suggestion among fans or whoever's paying attention that maybe they'll capitalize on a seller's market and try and move Bo or Vlad or somebody like that during the season so that you can maximize the trade like and give give you know it'll be a year and a half of those two players if they were to move them at the deadline i'd be shocked if that happened just given the investment the blue jays have made in having a team that's competitive and interesting right now even if you can make the argument that okay yeah look the team the team's a dud like they should blow it up and get a head start on their rebuild even if you are that type then the tough, the tough thing is, is like, look at the investment Rogers has made and what the Blue Jays' expectations are, and it's pretty hard to to punt that. And the other thing too is that if the Blue Jays are going to move into a rebuild or a retool, is Ross Atkins going to be the one making the selling trades? Like, it would be he came in as the GM in 2016, had that team that he inherited. They slowly kind of did their thing and they moved into their rebuild. He's already had that much time. Is he going to be the one then if the Blue Jays say, all right, this thing, it's not going to work. We're going to have to trade Bo and Vlad. I think it's going to come in the offseason. I don't think it's going to come in the season if it does happen. If it does happen, is Ross Atkins going to be the one who's allowed to make that trade? Personally, I, I would be shocked. I think that if this thing goes sideways, he's probably gone. But I mean, again, it's May. We have tons of time. But I think the story here more is that if the Blue Jays are mediocre, they'll probably be a team that stands pat and just doesn't do anything exciting at the deadline. I just I don't see them making a huge sale. Maybe it's, you know, if they're out and there's no way they can get back in. There's a few guys who are going to become free agents at the end of the season. Think about maybe Yusei Kikuchi, even Justin Turner, who they just signed. There's a couple of relievers there. Jimmy Garcia, Trevor Richards, um, Danny Jansen, I guess, though I still think he's a good candidate for an extension. Um, those are names we could see if they do a little sale, but I'd be shocked if it were the big names going during the summer. I think the Jays, if they're going to blow this thing up, they need to find a different GM and then they can go ahead and do that. Yeah, I think sort of the order of dominoes would be domino one, the Jays slip hard out of it here at some point in the next month, four to six weeks, whatever it is. Ding, that falls and probably pushes John Schneider out the door. And I think what we'd see is 
I don't think Ross Atkins would be allowed. I don't think Ross Atkins would be allowed to make a full-time managerial change in the sense of going out, hiring someone, signing them to a three-year extension. I feel like we'd get something like a DeMarlo Hale or Pete Walker takes over on an interim basis for the rest of the season. Or, oh yeah, Jesus Christ. People will love that. (laughs) Yeah, people will go nuts for that one. Um, Something like that would happen and that manager would bring them to the end of the year. They would, you know, let this thing die out and it would be full blown. Everybody's gone in the winter and they go from there. Um, I I don't think we're going to see sweeping changes. Uh, Just to finish off the Rosenthal quote, he said, this group, like all teams, has a limited shelf life. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. and shortstop Bo Bichette are free agents after 2025 and they haven't signed yet. I'm not even sure the Blue Jays want to go long term with Guerrero Jr. after what they've seen from him recently. I mean, yeah, that's. That's obvious, and in I think Blue Jays fans, we've talked about it. Like, if Vladimir Guerrero Jr.'s name was anything other than Vladimir Guerrero Jr., I think the view on him around baseball would be a lot different. Like he he's had one good season so far, one great season so far in his career. I I think it's obvious that you wouldn't want to go long term with a guy like that unless something crazy happens in the back half of this season, and all of a sudden you're you're incredibly confident in him. Um, I, I would be interested, you know, what are the markets for the relievers who become free agents after 2025? Romano, Meza, Swanson, like maybe there'd be one of those not fringe contenders, but maybe I'll call them new contenders. And we're getting a look if you're watching on the YouTube at the 2025 free agents. Um, you know, teams who want to contend this year and maybe want to buy this year without sacrificing a lot for rentals would maybe be in on guys like Meza, Meza, Swanson, Romano. You know, maybe it even is a team like the Kansas City Royals, or I look to the NL, a team like the Cincinnati Reds who could who could maybe look to beef up their bullpen a hair. Maybe those guys have a market, but again, I just think that with Atkins at the helm, is he going to have sign-off to go move pieces like that from not just this year's roster, but next year's roster as well? I have a hard time believing that's a major sell-off is coming, so I agree with you in uh in that sense also Um, think about also remember like uh, when atkins came in in 2016 they the the whole sentiment was the cleveland crew are going to come in here and they're going to blow up alex anthopoulos's lovable team and that's what everybody was nervous about but man they 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 tried to win in 2017 they didn't trade josh donaldson away and then you know same thing there was um marcus stroman and aaron sanchez they were under control there was talk hey if the jays blow it up you can start things off on a good foot by trading all these guys and they didn't. So I, I, I really do think that the Rogers has an expectation of team of uh, Blue Jays being a competitive team and they're going to at least try. I think that the, 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 the time when the blow up might come would be next year's trade deadline when it's Bowen Vlad are half a year away from free agency. And then you also have the Romano Meza and Swanson, like you mentioned, I think that's where it would be. I think for better or for worse, just like we saw with the first time around, they're going to try and make this thing competitive, even if it's not working. I don't think it's going to be, oh, geez, you know, we're four games back of the wild card in June and it's just not looking good. I don't think we can win the World Series. You better blow it up. It's going to be it's it's going to take a lot more than that for for Rogers to pull the plug on this. It, the only thing I'll say to that is you're right. That was the approach in 2017. And I think we could look back and be like, I wonder how much differently the retooling oh, yeah. goes if they pull the trigger. Do Atkins and Shapiro regret that? Do they sit there? Are they going to, right? Are are they going to sit there and be like, we tried this in 2017. And remember the rumors of like Donaldson for Jack Flaherty? How much different is the retool if you pull the trigger on that? Who knows what the offers were for Sanchez and Stroman at that point? So that would be my only concern is that they're sitting there going, ah, we're going to learn from our mistakes. We're going to, we're going to pull the pin early on this and try to really get some big name young players in this organization. And maybe we're good again in two years and it's a quick snappy little turnaround. I hope that's not the case. I don't think it would be the case, but I guess that would be, you know, if I were to play devil's advocate to it, the the one argument you could make, Um, but we'll see. We're so far away from that. Like, that's the other thing too. I was watching, it was one of those MLB talk shows. Um, and they were talking about if the season ended today, the Texas Rangers would miss the playoffs. Can you believe it? The word and it's like, dude, it's May 3rd. We have 120 some baseball games left still to play. Like, what are we doing here? It's it is oh, very, yeah. very early to be having these conversations, I think is the point we should end this on, maybe. 
Yeah, it's 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 fun to indulge them just because this is the talking points right now. And it it's valid to think about the Blue Jays doing a rebuild long term. Like we talked about this in the preseason edition when Stoughton was on the show. We this is a talk like a, it's it's a thing to talk about. But yeah, you're right. Like it's it's important to sit back and be like, there's so much left to be played. Like I think around this time last year was it was into at least like mid late May. The Pittsburgh Pirates were one of the better teams in the National League. Like so much is going to change. You have teams like Cleveland, Kansas City. Boston, Detroit, that are all ahead of the Blue Jays in the standings. And it's like, I think Kansas City's look pretty good. I think Cleveland's got a good pitching staff. I think Boston's got some good things on their roster. But are these teams actually all going to be good in August? Like, the Blue Jays are a team now, like, we're used to the Blue Jays being a flashy and exciting, fun team. 2015, 2021, those are the teams that they were. And now this is a team that is supposed to be good over the course of a marathon. This is, you should see the Blue Jays and what makes them solid shine through during those months in July and August when it's dog days and the other teams are, you know, burning out a little bit more. Their pitchers aren't throwing as hard. Their batters have sore hands, you know, that kind of thing. When, when, when the dog days of summer show up, you'd think a good pitching and defense team like the Blue Jays that can hit some home runs will start to do better. But I don't know. I, I understand why people after this first month aren't very optimistic because it's 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 there's a difference between being like, oh, yeah, if the Blue Jays pull it together, then they're going to be one of the best teams in baseball and they can win it all. But right now it looks like if the Blue Jays pull it together, they can be the second wild card team and go into a three game series with uh, whoever and then, you know, lose in the ALDS. They do, it's pretty hard to get excited about them going on any kind of deep run right now but I, I keep circling it back to negative when you try to make it positive but yeah. it, it's hard right now it's hard right now to have good vibes yeah and, and another thing too like I, I like that point this is a team that is built to be good over the course of a marathon and you look at last year remember we kept saying like oh just just wait the bats will get hot and they'll win they'll win nine or ten in a row at some point and they never did they won six in a row in april and then their second longest streak was a five gamer in uh, in August or September. I think it was September. Yeah, it was September when they beat the Red Sox and Yankees uh, over the course of five games. And aside from that, it was just like, man, they'd go win two or three and then lose one. Then they'd go lose two, but then they'd win four. And like, I feel like again this year, as boring as that is, we're probably going to get that same thing where I don't think there's a magical 12 game run here that really draws everybody in and gets a bunch of fans on the bandwagon and gets everyone all excited. I really think it'll just be like a handful of stretches of them going seven and three while everyone else is going six and four and they'll just chisel their way up the standings if, if they're going to get back in it. That's kind of the path I, I, I see them taking. Yeah, all those, like, I remember last year it was, we did this quite a few times, and it'd be, oh man, the Blue Jays look terrible lately, they've lost their last two games, and then you'd go and look, and it's like, oh yeah, they're six and ten, six, six and four in their last ten, this really isn't that bad, and that was almost like, that was the story of the season, and I think it's it's probably going to be like that again this year. A 12-game winning streak for this version of the Blue Jays would be a weird thing, like, <laughs> imagine how stressful and frustrating a 12-game winning streak among this team would look like, like... <laughs> It's, it's honestly kind of funny to imagine. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, hey, who knows? Maybe they do start one of those this weekend. They're out in Washington. Thanks for tuning in to Blue Jays Nation Radio. Don't forget to like and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts from to never miss an episode.